Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys, and today I'm really excited to show you this video. Uh, today we're going to be showing you how to build and assemble our 3D printed switch button. Uh, so this is our own design. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, it is very good. Um, I'm really proud of it. Um, it requires very little pressure to activate the toy. It activates on off center presses um, And it really does rival what you can get from like the big button manufacturers that are out there that charge You know 70 to a hundred dollars for a button of similar size uh, You know for about five dollars worth of parts and materials and a little bit of your time uh, You can build one of these yourself and um, you can have a really good high quality switch if you don't have access to a 3D printer or this is just isn't your thing, uh, we do also sell these on our Etsy shop and I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, the proceeds there go to help fund what we're doing. So uh, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, it's another great option to get a good high quality switch at a fraction of what you'll pay um, going with the big name brand buttons out there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and let's get started. All right, so what I want to do here is show you kind of step by step uh, how to get our files and how to process them and, uh, to be 3D printed. Uh, so even if you've never 3D printed anything before, as long as you've got access to the software and a 3D printer, uh, you should be able to make one of these yourself. Now, a couple of things to note is that software is get most likely going to be different. Our 3D printer is not a very common one, so, so chances are what you're looking on your screen is going to be different than ours. But I think you'll be able to use this video as a guide to do this yourself in your own software. A lot of the settings and stuff will be similar in terms of their values where you can just find wherever it is in your software and plug it in and you should be good to go. So first thing we need to do is we need to get our STL files off our website. Uh, if you go to www.switchtoys.org, uh, you'll be taken here to this site. Uh, you do need to be a member to get our files, but it is completely free. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and hit log in and sign up. Or if you're already a member, go ahead and sign in to your account. Alrighty, and then once you're signed in, you'll see your little initial up here in the corner. Uh, you can go to Resource Hub and then hit File Library. If you haven't yet, check all these resources out. We've got a bunch of different things in there um, to help you adapt toys. But what we're looking here today is a 3D printer switch button. So go ahead and select that file. And there's two files here. So there's a, the instructions, which is kind of like what I'm doing now, uh, just kind of in a written form. Uh, but this is what we're after, this STL file right here. So I'm gonna hit uh, the checkbox and hit download. And if you're on a Mac, it's going to download into your downloads folder and you, we need to open up this zip file. And then there's our file right there. Uh, what we need to do now is open up our slicing software. This is what we use for our Dremel 3D printer. Uh, and all we need to do is load the file into that software and you can see there it is there. Now. Your settings you can kind of play around with a little bit. Uh, you could probably get by with what your printer says is kind of like medium quality. Um, we like to build it a little bit more robust just to kind of make sure it survives, you know, a fall or someone being rough playing with it. Um, so we've got some settings that we use, but again, you could probably mess around with it a little bit. Uh, these are the settings that we like. So if you go to your uh, layer height, this is basically how thick each individual layer is. Uh, we like 0.1, you could probably get away with 0.2. Uh, infill density, we like 50%. Again, you could probably do less. Uh, speed, 60 millimeters per second. Uh, some other things here. Uh, we like to generate the supports. That just helps kind of with this rounded portion of the top of the button. Uh, we find that if we don't generate those supports, our printer kind of gets a little, it's just, it's not very smooth. It gets a little kind of fuzzy. Um, uh, if you've got a really nice 3D printer, you can probably do without the supports. Uh, and that's basically it. So all we need to do here is hit prepare. And this is generating basically all the code that the printer uses uh, in terms of like where the printer head will, will travel and at what speeds and all these settings that we, we selected. So in a second here, it'll show us uh, how long it'll take to print and how much filament it'll take. All right, so you can see it'll take seven hours and 27 minutes to print. So all we need to do is hit save 
file. And I'm just gonna save this in our downloads file so everything's kind of together. And there it is, there's our G code file. This is what we're going to load into our 3D printer. You could probably put this on a thumb drive and plug it into your 3D printer. Ours is all cloud-based. So uh, I go to our, our cloud software for our 3D printer and hit up, file upload. And I'm gonna just put that G code file in there. Hit save. And then all I need to do is hit build and it will send it to the 3D printer. I just gotta make sure I've got filament in there um, and it should be good to go. And in, in about seven and a half hours, it, I'll have a 3D printed button. And when it's done, I will show you uh, how to put it all together. All right, so I've, my print just finished and I went ahead and just removed all of the support material. Uh, what that is is basically just uh, extra material that the 3D printer prints to support like little overhangs and stuff like that. Um, if you have a really good 3D printer, you might be able to get away without doing that, but uh, I just go ahead and print the supports. Um, so our 3D print's good. We're gonna also need a mechanical keyboard switch. Now this is the MX Cherry Speed Silver. Um, you could probably do with any mechanical keyboard switch, but we really like this one because it requires very little force to activate and it re requires very little like travel. So I just barely press the button and it goes off, which is really good when you're dealing with a switch adapted toy button like this because a child that may have uh, a lack fine motor control or strength to make sure that they hit the center of the button every time, you know, we want to make sure that if, even if they make contact with really any of the surface of the top that it will activate, which this button allows us to do. And then lastly, we're only gonna need a headphone jack. Uh, this was like a five foot long cable that I basically just cut in half, so now I've got two. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fish our headphone jack wire through the hole in the base. All right, so you can see inside, there's this line that's printed on the base plate. That's basically showing you the path that the wire is gonna take. So it's gonna come from the button, it's gonna go through this cable capture and then through the hole in the um, mechanical keyboard switch housing. Eventually the cord's gonna get there, but what I wanna do is just basically get it through the hole in the base. And I'm gonna pull a bunch of extra slack out and then I'm gonna fish it through the hole in the uh, switch housing. Now you might need a little screwdriver or something just to kind of help get that cable where you need it so you can grab it. Okay, and I'm gonna pull all this extra out so that I've got plenty of wire to work with. And then once we're done soldering, we'll pull everything back through and make it nice and neat. So the next thing we need to do is we need to prep our headphone jack wire. This is gonna be very similar to when we prep our headphone jack wires when we're adapting toys. So what we're gonna do is remove the outside casing. And you can see inside here, there are gonna be three wires. Ours has a red wire, a white wire, and all these bare copper wires. Uh, your jack might look different, but if you have a white wire, chances are what you're gonna to wanna to do is leave that wire separate and we need to combine the other two wires. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna twist these copper wires together just so I kinda of have them all together as one wire. And then I'm gonna remove some of the casing on the red wire. And I'm gonna twist these two wires together, basically forming one wire. Okay, and then I'm gonna remove just the tip of the white wire, just like that. Now this is great, except we need to put some heat shrink wire cover on this wire, just to make sure that it doesn't accidentally touch something. All right, so I've got some heat shrink wire cover here. Uh, you could also use electrical tape if you didn't have heat shrink wire cover, but I'm just, I basically cut it to the length that I want, and I'm gonna just slip it over the wire. And now I'm gonna use a heat gun to heat up that wire cover and it'll shrink it down and stay put. So looking at this white wire, I noticed that when I was stripping the wire, I cut a little bit of the casing off. So I'm just gonna put a wire cover over that one as well, just to be safe. All right, so now it's time to solder. 
and we needed to use our mechanical keyboard switch. And you can see on these switches that there are these two prongs. That is what we're gonna connect our wires to. So I'm just gonna use some clothespins here to kind of hold things in place for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically wrap my wire around these prongs, kind of like in a loop. And then I'm gonna solder them together to hold it in place. And I'm also wrapping these around in the opposite direction so that the ends don't accidentally touch. Because if that happens, the toy's just gonna kinda constantly go off on you. It'll drive you nuts. And the other thing kind of to note is that you want to have your wires coming in from the opposite side of where these prongs are. That just allows you to have enough space in this housing to fit everything. Once my soldering iron's heated up, I'm just going to heat up the solder. And make that connection. And you can give your wires a little tug just to make sure that they're going to stay in place. Alright, so before we move on, I want to test the button just to make sure that it works. Because once we put the lid on the top, it's really hard to get off. Uh, so I plugged in a toy and I'm going to give the button a press and make sure that it works. There we go. Alright, so now what we can do is we can pull out all this extra cord. And I'm just gonna kind of make sure I'm not pinching anything. And all you do is you press down on the mechanical keyboard switch into that housing and it kind of clicks into place. And then that's secure there. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that this, if someone were to accidentally pull on this cord, it doesn't pull the whole thing out. So that's what this little cable capture slot here is for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna feed it into that slot and kind of press it all the way down. There's little teeth on there that should hold the wire. And you can give it a, a tug and make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, if it does slip a little bit, you, we can put some hot glue or some CA glue into that slot just to kind of lock everything in place. I'm gonna just go ahead and do that, even though mine's pretty secure. I'm just gonna show you that. So I'm just gonna put a bead of glue down into that slot. Doesn't take a lot. And I'm just gonna make sure I don't get any glue on our keyboard switch. And then I'm gonna use just a little bit of activator to kind of instantly dry that glue. All right, so now we're ready to put the top on. Uh, and on the top there are these little slots that are gonna line up with the, the tabs on the base. So all I do is basically find one of those slots, line it up with the tab. And then I'm just gonna kind of work my way around the button, kind of pressing in from the base and, and pushing the button over those tabs. It does require a little bit of force, but um, it's not all that difficult, just like that. And you might need to kind of wiggle it a little bit. All right, and there we go. Um, once it clips back on, it's not gonna come off and uh, We've got yourself a button. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, if you have access to a 3D printer, you know, for a couple of dollars worth of parts and materials and some of your time, you could build yourself a really good high quality switch that'll last you a really long time. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, check out your local library or makerspace. Oftentimes they'll have printers there that you can use. You might have to buy a little bit of filament, but it might be a good resource for you. And if you don't have access to a 3D printer at all, or if this just isn't your thing, uh, we do sell these on our Etsy shop. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. A button is about $20. The proceeds go help support what we're doing here, and it'll save you a ton of money compared to going out and buying them from the big button manufacturers. If you have a group or an organization and you want to adapt toys and switches kind of on a bigger scale for kids in your community, uh, you can form what's called a Switch Chapter, and you can find more information about that on our website at www.switchtoys.org. And if you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe. It really does help us out in a huge way, so thanks in advance for that. And I guess that's basically it. Uh, my name is Eric with Switch Adapted Toys, and until next time, I'll see you. 
Switch, adapted toys, making play possible.